Hey, it's Sam of What Got To Do, and today I want to take you on a tour that I took when I was in Whitefish, Michigan. It's the Shipwreck Museum on Whitefish Point, and I think you're going to find it fascinating just like I did. So let's go. So it's just about a mile walk north from Whitefish Point Harbor, where the Here's To Us is docked up to the Shipwreck Museum. So the Shipwreck Museum is situated here on Sini National Wildlife Refuge, a beam that. And all along here, there is also the museum, which is the Great Lakes Shipwreck Historical Society that owns the research vessel. And actually, the way I was explained is it's a research vessel that owns the museum. The Whitefish Point Bird Observatory and, of course, the Sini National Wildlife Refuge Whitefish Point Unit. So we're here at the entrance where you purchase your ticket. And there will be about three buildings that we'll be able to go through. And this is what they call the campus here. A number of buildings that house the administration and everything that it needs to do to run the historical foundation. More of the grounds here at the museum and we are going to be taking a tour of that particular building in depth. It is the lighthouse keeper's house where they stayed and kept the light lit. And you will see that lighthouse there has a skeletal frame around it to ensure that it doesn't blow over in the winds. Here is the museum gift shop, which has a lot of historical gifts in there and souvenirs, so pick up some souvenirs. And also, about the only thing to eat in there is ice cream and fudge. Beautiful and well-kept grounds here. And in this particular building, it houses the office of the U.S. Coast Guard Detachment that is at Whitefish Point. On the north portion of the grounds, there's an area where you can go observe Lake Superior. And also, if you're a rock collector, a great area to collect rocks. If you look out there, just in the water, you'll see some remnants of the original docks that were out there that the life-saving crews would use. And in this photo, you can see the original docks that were there back in the early 1900s. I am here with Sarah Wildey. She is the operations manager of the Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum. Sarah, thanks for giving me some time and maybe you could tell us a little bit about the Shipwreck Museum and a little bit about the research that's going on. Sure, thanks Sam. Thanks for coming up and visiting. Welcome to our Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum here. Um, it's a very historical complex. We have our main shipwreck museum gallery where we interpret 13 area shipwreck with beautiful displays and artifacts and paintings. We have a couple of Fresnel lenses. We have a second order Fresnel lens, a fourth order, and a fifth order throughout our complex. We have a 1861 lighthouse keeper's quarters along with its iron pile tower. We have a U.S. surf boat building, a U.S. Navy radio building, cruise quarters, motor light boat building, buildings that you can tour through. Now our museum was founded back in 1978. A small group of people, divers, historians, teachers, all got together and just started this beautiful museum here. And then eventually we were able to obtain the historical buildings that were here on site from the lighthouse keepers from the U.S. Coast Guard. So now the museum, we we maintain this property and the buildings, and it's just a beautiful area. And of course, we're right here on Whitefish Point, where ship traffic is quite intense. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard it's called the Shipwreck Coast, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about the mission of the David Boyd, which is a centerpiece of the museum. Yes, I would love to talk about that. So the museum actually started with our research vessel, and we've had the RV David Boyd, um, probably from the early 80s, and we have it outfitted with side scan sonar, and we have a remote operating vehicle that we can deploy. It takes high res video 
and still pictures so we can send this unit down to down to a thousand feet we have that much tether and the rov is rated for that depth wow that's quite um, uh deep thousand feet <laughs> yes and we can pull the sonar you know we probably have fifteen thousand feet of cable to pull our sonar unit so the main purpose of the museum was basically to find shipwrecks um, that's one of our main mission statements is and to i i hear that uh <laughs> you found a couple last week is that correct that is we've been stationed over at grand marais for maybe five weeks and we've been fortunate to locate two shipwrecks that their locations have not been known since they went down and we've pretty much identified the shipwreck the location we have wonderful side scan images of it and video and we've determined that one of the shipwrecks went down in 1885. Wow. So these are very old schooners, three mass schooners. They were carrying iron ore, so which made them very heavy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, the, the ship would either rupture the hull on the bottom going over a shoal or I think maybe it happened during loading or sometimes the wood would just split but you know it filled up with water it became unstable the crew member were able to get off the ship but the ship did go down yeah um, wow so it's just uh, overloading <laughs> a uh, wood ship with iron ore yeah yeah <laughs> well Thank you very much, Sarah, for your time here and all the efforts that you uh, have put into uh, this museum, a wonderful place. So, uh, Well, thank you. And I appreciate you visiting us. And I know you came in on your boat, and you're a quarter mile down the road at the Whitefish Point State Harbor. So thanks for walking up and visiting our museum. It's a pleasure. Thanks again. This is a very well laid out museum. And one of the first things that you see when you come in is the original bell that they retrieved from the Edmund Fitzgerald. And then they put a replica bell down at the site in honor of the 29 men that were lost. So you'll go kind of from the left to the right clockwise around there and see the first thing is the very first shipwreck was the Invincible. And they've also commemorated the very first steamship, the Independence. From there, it progresses historically uh, all the way back from the Niagara shipwreck to the Comet shipwreck. And then you start to see kind of a theme of why some of these ships went down. And one of the first ones that uh, st struck me was the Alberta colliding into the Osborne. And the Alberta had a record for excessive speed in its history and of course rammed the Osborne, the Osborne sank. Then onto the Vienna and Nipigon collision which was very interesting. They got really close to be able to say hello and one hit the other and sank. Another one had to do with fog. That was the uh, Samuel Mather and the Brazil the, a wood boat, the Samuel Mather uh, was sunk by the steel boat Brazil in fog. We also then progress over to the uh, Myron in 1919 had weather problems and uh, eventually ended up on the shoal. The captain stayed with the boat, ordered the crew to get into the lifeboats and the crew perished but later about a couple days later the captain was rescued. Then in 1920, a collision, again, uh, this was confused passing signals between the su Superior City and the Willis King. And of course, a deadly combination of fog and speed, the collision of the John B. Cowell and the Isaac M. Scott. And all of these are really well laid out through the museum and you can sit there and read or stand there and read all of the details about it. And then in 1958, November of 1958, when those gales of November come, uh, the Carl D. Bradley had an explosion, and it was really on its last trip of the season, uh, only had 100 miles to go to uh, Rogers City. 
1966 in November, another explosion, and this one is really detailed uh, from the lone survivor, Dennis Hale, or sole survivor, an explosion on the boat. Uh, he clung to a lifeboat with three other men, but he was the only one who survived. Finally, in the very last corner is the Edmund Fitzgerald. In 1975, we still weren't very mature with our weather forecasting tools and the Edmund Fitzgerald. Again, a lot of theories on why the Edmund Fitzgerald sank and you can kind of read through those. And again, very moving as you look at the displays in this considered the central part of the shipwreck museum. Next area I'd like to take you through is the Lighthouse Keeper's Quarters and this was really fascinating. They had excellent docents in there that told the story about the lighthouse keeper and the assistant lighthouse keeper and essentially this was two men both were married and had children and one was the keeper and the other one was the assistant keeper and so they would take turns lighting that and they specifically wanted married men in there because a single man would be totally bored out there so stories of how the children grew up and all of that as you go through this lighthouse keeper quarters that has been restored all the way from the parlor to the bedrooms to the kitchens and there's artifacts in there that you can learn about how life was as a lighthouse keeper and how they got supplied and kept the light lit which was their main mission as a lighthouse keeper. The last building I'll take you through is the Surf Boat House, and I found this very fascinating from a historical perspective because the Life Saving Service actually was the original U.S. Coast Guard, and then they merged with the Revenue Cutter Service and then finally the Lighthouse Service to form the United States Coast Guard. The mission of the Life Saving Service was to, when there was a shipwreck, head out there by the boat, and they also came up with some other means like the life cart and the Lyle gun to be able to go out there and rescue the crew members. Very knowledgeable docent there who I enjoyed getting to chat with. Lots of artifacts in here to be able to explore and learn from. So one of the things not to miss here is this bird observatory point. Heading up the step to see what it looks like. part of the bird sanctuary here and we'll be looking out over Lake Superior as we get up here. Lake Superior is probably giving out three footers there for sure today and you can see the sand dunes along here some 275,000 acres along the shores protected sanctuaries beautiful and one of the focal points here is the study of the raptors it says 15 to 25,000 raptors migrate through this area each spring that includes hawks eagles vultures and falcons don't see any today but I'm sure they're out there as we end our tour here it's important to remember that this is the graveyard of the Great Lakes and this plaque talks to the three main reasons why it is the graveyard. All of the ships were funneled into Whitefish Point Bay. There was poor visibility and then also about 200 miles of wind coming across Lake Superior to build the heavy seas. Finally we see the monument to the Edmund Fitzgerald, the last major shipwreck on Lake Superior. And now it's time to head back to the Here's to Us we're parked right next to the David Boyd, or there's a slip in between the, us and the David Boyd, and we'll be heading on back to Sault Ste. Marie. Thanks for joining us on What Yacht to Do.